بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم So inshallah I'm going to talk about this root the qaf, the dal and the meem From this root we get what supposedly seems like two opposite meanings We know that in Arabic that words derived from a similar root contain a related meaning So we have the meaning of that which comes forth and that which is old So if that's a timeline what comes forth is present and future, and old is the past. So they're opposites. So let's explain this, inshallah. From this root, we actually have three categories of verbs. If, now, for those who have studied morphology, they'll understand the different categories here. On this side, we have the past tense verbs, and this side, the present tense verbs. What changes is the ain kalima. So here it's Fatha and here it's Dhamma. Fathu Dhammin. So here it's Bab Nasara. Now this verb means to proceed or to be in front. And this is transitive. Then we have Taduma Yakudumu. Dhammu Dhammin. Now verbs on this pattern we know are used for states and they're intransitive. So this verb means to be old. Or ancient. And then finally we have Kesru Fathin. Bab Samia. This verb means to arrive at or to reach. Let's use these verbs in a sentence, inshallah. So we have, for example, here, Yaqdumu Qawmahu, which means he preceded his people. So he went in front of them, whether physically or by rank. He was like the most virtuous of them. Whatever it is. But he preceded his people. Next we have the intransitive verb being used. So there's only a fa'il, which is the dhamir mustatir. Here we have yaqdumu. He is becoming old or ancient. This verb is rarely used. What is used, however, is the sifa mushabbaha, adim, which describes something that is old or ancient. Notice one other thing here. The present tense are the same in these two verb categories. So how do we distinguish? It's based on context, obviously. This takes an object. This does not take an object because it's intransitive. The last uh, verb category is قَدِمَ يَقْدَمُ The example is يَقْدَمُ الْمَدِينَ which means he arrived at the city. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there's actually a question. We have this meaning here. Now, it's quite easy to see the relationship between this verb and this verb here to proceed in to be in front and to arrive and to reach but how does this meaning fit in to be old and ancient let's look at this in more detail so here we have a foot which in arabic is called qadam so qadamun the indefiniteness means a foot and from it we get aqdam feet and two feet qadaman what's interesting about this is that the feet is that which takes one forward. So when you want to proceed or to be in front or to reach somewhere, you do this using your feet. So why is the word old derived from this same three-layer root? Why do you have the word Qadim? The reason why is this foot leaves footprints. So it leaves traces. That's how we reconcile between the two. When one presents something, he leaves something behind. So with a one is traveling and he leaves his homeland. Now it's quite interesting in the Quran that words on this three layer root actually contain these meanings. Let's explain this with two ayat inshallah. We have, this is in the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So you can go to that section. But I want to highlight this section here where it says, Antum wa aba'ukumul aqdamun. Now in some ayat, it mentions a different adjective. For example, الأولون, the first, the first of your forefathers. Here it's saying the most ancient. So it's pretty much saying the same thing. One could argue whether it's your first forefather or whether it's the most ancient forefather. It's talking about the same people. But actually there's a reason why this is mentioned. Because if you look at the context, what do the, these people say? They say, قَالُوا بَلْ وَجَدْنَا آبَاءَنَا كَذَلِكَ يَفْعَلُونَ they said, 
but we found our fathers doing thus. So what they were doing, they were worshipping idols. And they said, well, we found our fathers doing this. So that's quite interesting because what these people were doing, they were actually following in those footsteps of their forefathers. It's as if these, their Aba al-Aqdamun, were the first ones to take the step. And then the next generation. And the next generation. Until it got to them. So you see how beautifully this word is used in the context. Now the final ayah I want to mention. ذَلِكَ بِمَا قَدَّمَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ That is for what your hands have put forth. So what your hands have brought. So there it has the meaning of bringing something in front of one. But this bringing in front of one is based on one's past actions. So it's quite interesting, this word here, قَدَّمَتْ it doesn't just mean to bring something, but that this bringing is affected by what came before it, which was one's past actions, whether good or bad. Obviously, one could not understand this without knowing the Arabic language. So may Allah give us understanding. Subhanahu wa rabbika rabbil azati amma yasifun. Wassalamu ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.